Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about expander design a little bit more for patients with steep mandibular plane angles um, or long faces. And I've done plenty other videos on long faces, on expander design with long faces, how to manage patients with long faces, steep MPAs, but we're going to talk specifically about the expander design now, specifically if you've watched my other videos and you do need to watch those first, so to watch those, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, you can scroll down to the phase one playlist, you can put in the search, little search tab, there's a little magnifying glass on my page, Straight Smile Solutions, you can put in expander, RPE, um, long face, anything like that, and these, the videos should definitely pop up, you should watch those first, this is going to be a follow-up video. So basically, in a nutshell, anytime you do any type of arch expansion, sorry, paddle expansion, specifically maxillary paddle expansion, of course. Um, any expansion on the lower is just tipping. Um, still a useful thing, especially in the mixed dentition. I'm a big fan, and you can watch my other videos on expansion, why you do a lower, when do you do a lower, why I sometimes do lowers. Might be different than a lot of other orthodontists do. So whenever I have long faces, I want to try to get as much intrusive forces happening during that expansion as possible because expansion in nature is an extrusive type of mechanic. So if I already have a patient with a steep mandibular plane angle or a long face, it's going to get worse while I expand. That's bad, 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 or an anterior open bite or something like that, right? If it's somebody who's, you know, hypodivergent, short face, um, square jaw, great, fantastic, I want it to open up. So we're talking specifically about long face kind of people, anterior open bite kind of people, um, airway kind of people, things like that. Things that are people that are looking long and we want to avoid them getting more long during the expansion process. So here's four different things that you can do and I apologize these photos may not be the best. Some were my images, some were stock images. I could do the best I could. So the first one is to do a fixed kind of hyrax. Um, but then you have the, the lab build acrylic onto the back teeth. So pros for that is it works really, really, really well. Obviously, there's no compliance issue. It really works amazingly. I've done the flip side. Well, we'll get to that. Where I've done a regular one on top, no acrylic, okay? Um, and I've had a removable acrylic block on the lower. That's called a gelb or a gelb, and I have other videos on that. Problem with that is it doesn't tend to get worn because <laughs> it's easy to take it out. So they're usually take popping them out at school and whatever they want. So when it's on there and it's glued, well, it's on there for 24 seven, so it really, really works. Um, that's the positive part. Bad part is, of course, difficulty speaking. Um, what else? Uh, carries terrible. I mean, just the, I mean, you're, even if you use fluoride kind of cement, you know, your key tack or something like that, it, it still leaks in there. Still a huge chance for bombed out teeth. You just have to do this fast, quick, and be done. I wouldn't be using this even for retention necessarily. Maybe I'd put on a, a TPA or something more hygienic for retention just during the act of turning features and then get the darn thing off, okay? Um, odor, smell, food traps, caries, just gross, 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 gross. Not a very fun patient experience. I have done a few of these, but I, for the most part, I hated it, and so did the patient. Um, number two, you can get, again, terrible photo. They kind of cut it off, but you could have a banded hyrax, okay, but you could have them run rests over the occlusal plane. Um, I've seen quite a few, and then you usually put drops of glue on the rest. That helps to prop the bite open. I often prefer in those long cases to make sure I'm getting um, a little blob of composite or some key tack or some IRM on every single tooth that has a contact, so every posterior tooth. That really helps to balance the forces along with the rest. That works for me, okay? Um, remember, if you're putting composite bumps on, you don't want to etch and bond them, or, you'll get, or it's basically a filling. You're going to have to drill it off. I prefer just to bond it and stack it, no etch. Obviously, no prime because it's not. we're not going into dentin. Um, and if it falls off, it falls off, you know? Who cares? I mean, it's, it's meant to be able to pop off easily. So they may come off and you can replace them, but it's, you don't have to drill them off usually, so that's nice. So rests and bumps are just bumps only on every single posterior tooth that has contact. The third one would be you could have a removable kind of Schwartz and do bumps, just like I said. And I'm fine with that too. That's another option. Again, you need to use your, your articulating paper, see where the occlusion points are on all the posterior teeth, and you can pick upper, you can pick lower, I don't care. Obviously, if you're doing this version where you're doing a combo of composite bumps and rests, you need to have it all on the same arch, so it's all gonna be on the upper. If you do removable, you can do an upper and lower. Another option is to build, like I talked to you about earlier, the posterior acrylic into the actual expansion device. This is a lower. You can do that too, again, 
often doesn't get worn. So you really have to pick the right patient. Usually I like to know what part of me likes to look at the kid. I mean, if they're coming in and they're younger and they don't seem to care about how they <laughs> look, you know, like they're just quirky and they'd be love to wear something funny and talk funny. Like, you know, they're seven, eight, maybe even nine. They're just cool about getting colors and rainbows. Then it's going to be fine. If it's somebody who looks very put together, the kid's already like preteen, really worried about how they look, how they act, how they dress, they're probably not going to wear this because it's going to affect the way they talk and look. So, you know, that's kind of how I pick my kiddos for these things. And I also kind of explain it to the parents and get their opinion. Usually they do have a strong opinion on fix versus removable. Um, obviously the fixed ones are going to be complaining more about the ability to eat and talk. It's going to be a huge upfront adjustment where the removable, they can kind of gradually ease their way into it. And if there was a major event, they could pop it out, but it really depends on whether or not the parents and the patients are going to be compliant, how well the parents are going to enforce the compliance at home. You have to kind of just get the, you know, get the whole picture, get their feedback. You get your gut feeling. If it doesn't match, then you can always do something where you say, hey, we can try this version, but if this doesn't work out for you, we'll have to change to another version. There will be an additional fee of X, Y, and Z. Usually for me, it's going to be the lab fee plus a tiny bit more for my time. So three, four, five hundred dollars extra to switch from fixed to removable, removable to fix. You always want to put that in writing, have them sign it because I can't tell you how many times, maybe at least 30, 40 percent of the times you're going to deliver one and they're going to switch to another just because they, they didn't like the experience. It wasn't for them. So the more you can explain it up front, give them their risk benefits and alternatives, document it on paper, let them choose. Here's what we recommended. Here's what you recommended. OK, you didn't pick what we recommended. So if you choose to change your mind later, there will be an additional fee. All right. Thanks so much. That's pretty much it.